Hello, I'm Tina Bowden. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I am a doctor of metaphysical science and my work revolves around supporting conscious evolution through metaphysical perspective. And I do this through a couple of services. One um, uh, is a conversation-based therapy that I call self-empowerment mentoring. And another is um, I'm a facilitator of conscious breath work. And I also teach classes and workshops, and I've been doing this work for about 12 years now. Those of you who do know me and have worked with me, um, you understand or know that my what I do is, um, my service is highly intuitive. So um, I read energies. And I just wanted to talk about a couple of things with the intention of offering support and guidance through these very, very uh, powerfully transformative times. Right now, as I'm taping this, this is April 1st, 2020. And I wanted to go over two main points. So one is to, I wanted to talk about the energies of this year of 2020 as a metaphor. And this is information that I wrote about on my Facebook and Instagram pages. At the beginning of the year, um, it's information that I actually started to get back in 2013, um, although it was, I just got the message at that time that 2020 was going to be a big year, and I knew that it was something around clear vision. I just couldn't see. <laughs> I couldn't see what that was. So um, as 2019 came to a close, the um, messages started to get more clear. So. I just wanted to go over those again here. Um, so I'm gonna just break this down into three main visions, hindsight, peripheral, and future vision. So I'm gonna start off with the hindsight. There is that saying that hindsight is 2020. So the message with the hindsight was to see that everything is connected. Every moment, every experience that you have ever had is consider it like a, a dot, right? And all these dots are have are connected and they create a bigger picture that is perfect. It's not it's not always easy for us to trust um, in the things that we don't know or can't see. But if we can get into that place of trusting that we are safe and that it is perfect and I know for there's going to be some aspect of the mind that says, well, wait a second, perfect is ideal. Um, let's, let's change that definition because <laughs> perfect is just trusting that everything is as it is and that there is a bigger picture. I'll just, I'll just kind of keep, keep that. Um, so that's the main, that was the main message with that hindsight was the encouragement to really get into that place of trusting the moment, trusting what is. Stop fighting against it, basically. So, um, is there anything else on that? I maybe, maybe I'll come back to it. Um, the next one is the peripheral vision. So we, as a collective, have largely been living with blinders on, and I'm going to relate this to levels of consciousness where we've been living at relatively low levels of consciousness. Nothing new here. I'm, I know you all know this. Um, but these, as we all have been collectively raising our consciousness, not all of us, sorry, enough of us, um, that we are starting to tip the scales. And I may do another video. This is kind of going back to the whole 2012 threshold and the end of the world and this whole shift into a new cycle of energy which has led us here to this time of this, this experience of this virus. Um, um, sorry, one moment. <laughs> Back on track. Okay, so as, as, um, as we have been, our consciousness has been expanding, more and more power starts to come with this and more and more, I'll use metaphysical language, um, light we start to embody more light. And what happens in that process is that we see what's hiding in the dark. And that's how I see the dark is, is just, it's, it's um, 
deception, right? So anything like lies, um, anything that's hiding from the light of the truth. So our, our blinders are starting to come down, which is great, <laughs> which is so great. Um, so we are seeing a fuller, broader picture of who we are, and we are seeing our connect, our interconnectedness with each other and with all of it. And in just the few short weeks, especially here in North America, with the experience of this um, virus, we have been seeing a lot. We've been seeing a lot of changes of what happens when, when we react in fear and when we respond in love and um, how that, what that creates and how, um, okay, I wasn't going to go here, but I'll just go into it a little bit. Um, just the idea of if you're, if you are staying home, that you're okay. You may not feel totally okay all the time. It's totally understandable to be feeling off your rocker because the energies are, the, the ebbs and the flows and the spikes and the lows are just, they're pretty intense right now. And if you're sensitive to energies, you're feeling that. Um, I'm, I'm going to come back to this. So um, back to the uh, peripheral. So as those blinders come down, we will see a lot more, which is fantastic. And the sort of caveat, if you will, um, the, the other side of the coin is that we are going to see what's been hiding in the dark. Um, and that's not going to be entirely comfortable. We can celebrate it. So this more than ever is our time to come together and support each other through this. Um, I'll come back to that. It's also an invitation with that peripheral vision is when we see what's going on around us, the opportunity is to choose who, who are you going to be in relation to that? So when I see somebody who needs help or needs toilet paper, <laughs> who am I going to be? And I have toilet paper. Who am I going to be when I know this? Am I going to hold all my toilet paper to myself? And I'm just using that as the example because we've, you know, that's for whatever reason, we've chosen toilet paper as being our highest commodity right now, um, generally speaking. Um, are you going to share with your neighbors? Are you going to share with um, others who, for for whatever reason, ha aren't able to get as much as you? Um, and once this passes, which it will, who are we going to be? So this is our, it's, it's a very powerful time of, um, oh, it's the word. I want to say hibernation, but that's not what I mean the the term for being in the cocoon right um anyways gestation no <laughs> okay forget it i'll leave it um so anyways for us to sit and be with ourselves and and really 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 line up our energy and really get clear within ourselves of who we are and who we prefer to be and what world we are wishing to consciously co-create as we come through and out of this. And that brings us to the future vision. And when these visions started coming to me, the vi the future vision was the first one that my mind wanted to focus on because, and it makes sense because we have had so much focus on with, with self-help and, um, you know, understanding the power of the mind and how to, how to create. Um, and so we've, we've, a lot of us have just really been focused in a linear way on the future and and how to create the the most ideal future for yourself however as this metaphor was becoming more clear to me it made sense that until we have clarity with our past and until we have clarity of what's going on around us which is the fullness of what's going on within us the future doesn't exist Right. So not, I mean, it does. Okay. Scratch that. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to up, up, update that a bit. Um, it's, we are now in this time where the future that we are creating is more powerful than ever. 
it is more important than ever. Some some things are getting reprioritized for for us as individuals and as a collective. So um, it's we're in this funky little time of of not knowing what's going to happen. So just a reminder that with that future vision, and this is probably something I'll come back to with future videos, because there's not a lot of information other than that for me right now. I hope that makes sense. I don't mean to leave you hanging with that, but um, just be just getting very, very clear because as a conscious being, we need to start practicing alignment, inner alignment with that future that we wish to create. So if you don't wish to have live in a world that fights, stop fighting. Stop pushing against the things that you don't want and that you don't prefer. Um, if you want to live in a world that is peaceful, explore what that means within yourself. I, th I hope that's creating enough of a picture for right now. Um, okay, so I'm just going to segue now into our current experiences with this virus as I had sort of touched on there and and I'm not the first one to touch on this I, I know that and hopefully by this time you have um, sought out or come across different um, guidance um, teachings um, uh, mediums and, and channels of information that have been supportive for you um, but just to touch on again, that there is so there are so many facets to this experience that I'd say most of us did not see coming. Some of us who study patterns in energy or in just in the world um, may have had an, an idea. Um, some who are privy to information probably had an idea. Um, I don't mean to speculate or throw out, um, start any type of conspiracy theories there. Um, but there are, <clears throat> when we, when we realize that within our one world, there are many, many, many worlds and there, because there are many perspectives of the whole, and I'm just going to use my little, my little teaching tool. So let's just say this is the world, <laughs> all these little colored pins at the, you know, that's a representation of us. So we all are looking at the world or life from many perspectives and they're all valid. Having said that, so, so with everything right now, there's a lot of energy that's swirling around. I, um, if you work with me or if you have worked with me, you, you probably heard me use the snow globe metaphor. <clears throat> In that, you know, when the snow globe is sitting on the shelf, all that snow has settled down to the bottom. And, and every once in a while, we experience a big shakeup. And it's very uncomfortable. Another metaphor could be just ebbs and flows. Um, but this is a massive global shakeup. And you can have your perspectives on, on what that is. And it's all, it's all good and valid. And with all of that you are probably feeling a lot. So you are probably are feeling lost and confused and that's normal. That's, to I shouldn't say it's normal. I don't know, I've never been through this before <laughs> that I can remember, um, but it makes sense. It's completely valid because it's, it's like the carpet has been pulled out from under our feet. So if you're feeling in off balance, you, that's, yeah. That's normal. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you may be feeling shocked. Um, any, it, it may be triggering any um, um, past traumas. <sighs> you know, I hope that you have, um, you know, methods to take care of yourself with that. I'll, I'll kind of go over my suggestion at the end here. Um, and you may be feeling grief due to the sudden halt in your plans 
And we are shifting with this, with our shift in, uh, with our um, expansion of consciousness, sorry. We are shifting from a linear perspective of ourselves and life to multidimensional. And again, I'm just going to use this as just a quick kind of visual reference. It's not totally accurate because it's not, this is even still somewhat linear. Um, but to just represent that multidimensional, like linear focus, linear perception is past, present, future. Multidimensional is everywhere. And this whole COVID thing has, is a representation of that. I, I visualize like being a, like we've been on this kind of rocket ship going up, 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 up. And then there's this point where everything, it, it can't go linear anymore. And it just bursts out into multidimensionality and pieces flying everywhere. And that's kind of what we're experiencing right now, which from a metaphysical perspective is awesome. So yes, there's a lot of um, discomfort going on in the world right now. And there's a lot of fear, um, but there's so much, so much potential for you to be in your power. Um, so I, I encourage you to continue to practice that, to be in your center, to be present as best you can and with the tools that you know. And, and if you, you know, if you feel like you need more, just keep seeking them. People, I'm sure people are sharing them if you're on social media. Um, and I'll continue to share them as I make more videos. I don't want to go on for an hour. Here I'm trying to, I'm trying to wrap this up. Okay. <laughs> so, um, and that's with the, with the sudden halt in plans, that's again, the opportunity is to, is to um, find comfort in the not knowing and even get yourself to a place of excitement in the not knowing because in that place of excitement of not knowing is the indication that you trust that you're safe in life. And that's really what conscious evolution is about, right? and spiritual evolution and spiritual awakening. So yay. So in these times, because there's so much fear, I'm just going to leave you with this. Remember to breathe. So I know, I know how weird this can feel sometimes. I, I feel like there's been a shift in the last couple of days where people are smiling more and people are saying hello, but there was a little time there and everything was expanding and, and accelerating so fast that the fear, you could feel it with people and it was very uncomfortable. It was, it was, there was, you know, going to the grocery store was like a, had a post apocalyptic feel to it where I'd be in the, in the aisle and I'm the only one in the aisle because nobody wants to go near me. And I didn't take it personally, <laughs> obviously, but I remember like seeing people, you know, steer their little carts down the aisle and we'd make eye contact. And then there was a step back and having that, Ooh, that day floored me. I was, <laughs> that was really uncomfortable. Um, because it's, it's so opposes our nature. So I'm not encouraging you to get up in anybody's face or anything like that or touch anybody, but, you know, continue your protocols that feel good for you. Um, follow the advice of the experts. I'm not a medical doctor, so I'm not going to say anything about that, but I am going to remind you to breathe. Here's why. Um, breathing, <laughs> deep breathing is very good for your immune system. It's great for Im your immune system and it's important for your cellular consciousness. So when we are holding our breath, which we do unconsciously in times of fear or panic. So when you are out, when you do need to go out in public, if you are holding your breath, when you are in a space that you feel safe and comfortable, take in those deep breaths, whether that just be in your home and just even if you're at home, take in many deep breaths, set yourself. Here's a, here's a fun little thing is set yourself a number between one and 30 and then double it. That makes no sense. Screw that. Okay. So, <laughs> let's just say 50. Do 50, 50 deep breaths every day and, and continue those breaths. So you want them to flow in and out and you want to create that circular breath. 
that circular flow in your breath so the air is continually flowing in and out of your body. And this will help relax the mind, but it's also for your cellular consciousness to remember that you are safe because when we're holding our breath, um, we can unconsciously set that memory as we are unsafe. And so we want to come through this as, as open as possible. So give yourself permission to um, breathe. So, yeah, okay. Just going over my notes. I think I've covered everything. Um, so, yeah. I send you so much love. Um I will do more of these that are a little more exciting. I just really wanted to touch on those two main points um, today. So I'm going to probably reference this 2020 metaphor. Um, I will say too that um, just in the spirit of being transparent, which is the world that I am consciously preferring to create, I, which is for me, um, living in light. I don't mean full disclosure of everything, but being transparent. So I'm going to be transparent and say that, um, the reason you haven't seen videos from me before this is because it's so far out of my comfort zone to do this. Being in a classroom or in a room with somebody or a group of people is completely my comfort zone. Um, but being in a room here by myself where I'm, I've got my phone set up and I'm staring at this tiny little dot that I struggle to find. <laughs> um, is not in, has not been in my comfort zone. So I am choosing to create a new comfort zone. And so this is a not, I'm sure this is not a great, I know this is not a great video so far. I hope the information has had enough meaning for you. Um, I will get more comfortable as I do these. And I um, appreciate any encouragement and support in, uh, and, and just, you know, holding that space so that I can, <laughs> you know, for each other to continue to grow and, and step into new comfort zones. Um, okay. See, I don't even know how to close this other than to um, just send you love. I know we are coming through this. This is such an exciting time. And it's a very mixed bag of energies and emotions. And you're not alone in feeling up and down and all around. And I do look forward to our next connection. I look forward to connecting with you in person <laughs> again. Um, and for anybody that I will be working with in the future, I still am doing my phone um, sessions. So not for the breath work, though. Um, okay. All right. Enough. I don't even know. I'm going to sit here in, in a space of nothingness for a long time. So, okay. So much love to you. Keep breathing. Keep knowing you are safe. Keep using this time for um, alignment. Stay centered as best you can, which is all that is required. Okay, so much love.